So, I'm not Billy Graham, and many of us know who Billy Graham was. He's the guy that has a black Bible like this, waves it around, the word of the Lord says, repent. Well, his wife was a Presbyterian, and she said, I don't need to repent. I've been a good Christian all my life. I need to be nurtured and healed. And so that was a private conversation between these two, but you know, you're either Presbyterian or you're not. And so either this library is something to behold or something to be ridiculed. Now you can see, and I used to be an engineer, and so I measure things. And so I brought two measuring things. And they're both very narrow because they only have the English measuring system. I didn't grow up with the English method. I grew up with the metric system. But because I'm in the United States, I'll just use the one. Now, this is a craftsman one, which means it's guaranteed forever. This is Stanley. I think Stanley is no longer in business, but Craftsman is. They used to be Sears, and they have the Sears yearbook, but where is Sears? You know, this is part of the reformed, ever reforming, like this is yesterday's stuff and tomorrow's stuff. Now, because of my age, I'm yesterday's stuff, not tomorrow's. You are tomorrow's stuff. I'm not. I'm checking out. I've written my obituary, you know? And so now, what are we measuring here? Okay, if this is a library, and you can see it's triggered to our passage for today. See, it's not on top, it's not the beginning. It's about see, I, I've asked the people who do the zoom stuff to zoom in on this. You know, so they get they get to, see it's a little bit more than an inch. And about three quarters of the way down. You know, after you come from the first five books and then a bunch more books and then a bunch of Psalms and wisdom literature and the eight or 12 books of the prophets, then you get to Matthew and then you get to Mark and finally you get to Luke. And that's about three quarters of the way. There's a lot more stuff left to learn. So, you know, when you pick up and you wave this thing around, you're picking up a library of information that we do not teach but you have to learn. Now, I've triggered it twice, okay? So this is a trick. So first we do this, and guess what? It just arrives at the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And then I've printed my sermon. There it is. And it's exactly the same as what's printed in our New Revised Standard Version. Now, Mr. Heretic over there, he read from the wrong Bible. <laughs> An inclusion Bible. One of these new ones, you know, that people translate and, and you say, what are they doing? They're changing the words. You know, I remember back in the 50s, we were fighting over the virgin birth. What is a virgin? And we still haven't figured that out. And... So now I'm supposed to read Luke 2, 22 through 40, which is also my sermon, because I'm a biblical preacher. All right. You ready to hear the word of the Lord? When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the, Lord, in the law of the Lord, every firstborn, firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. That's in parentheses. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. 
it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Master, you are, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed a, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penaniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of the Lord was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. So, I'm supposed to do a three-point sermon, but it also requires one introduction. Say, the words that say, that are spoken by Simeon, and I'm kind of pretending to become Simeon right now, is that my life has been beneficial because Jesus is a light to the Gentiles. That's not us. Those are to the stranger, to the other, the people that are not us. Those are Gentiles. But for the in crowd, there is glory to your people, Israel. So, point number one, manger, birth. Six days ago, Jesus was born, and we celebrated that. Today, we're on the sixth day. Now, according to the law of the Lord, or Moses, eight days from now, Jesus is officially going to the temple of Jerusalem. So that's Tuesday. So that gives us today and tomorrow to celebrate and do other stuff. You know, get ready for tonight so that we can celebrate tomorrow. And I don't know how you intellectually or morally or how you're going to celebrate saying goodbye to this year and hello to next year. You know, that will be revealed by you. Point number one, born. He's going to get purified. And then they do everything according to law, and then 
the final part of it, when they had done everything, they go home to Galilee, to the town of Nazareth, where he grew, became strong, filled with wisdom, and the Lord was with him, or God was with him, this translation. All right, so, birth. 78 years ago, I was born in a hospital, and in that hospital, the nurses were all nuns. And it was in Europe. My older brother was born a year and a half before that. And he was born under occupation. I was born in liberation. Both times my dad was not there. He was either at work because the Nazis were telling him to go to work or get shot. But when I was born, he was in Germany liberating the world from Nazism. And so when you are born and you don't select your parents, you know, that is significant. And for Mary and Joseph, carrying their precious baby, their firstborn, they brought him to the temple. They brought him to church. Well, you know, now, now you just kind of go with whatever thinking you are thinking, because I have no clue of how you are now connected to this story. But my story is, when the nurses, the nuns, asked my mom, do you want this child baptized? No way, Jose. Because European history is incredibly violent. Christians killing each other in the name of God. And she was a child of a four-year occupation, or an adult in a four-year occupation. And the tension between the Counter-Reformation, which are Roman Catholics, or the Reformation, which is us, they didn't like each other. And they surely didn't listen to Jesus because they had better plans. So when I finally arrived in the United States in 1960, at 17 years old, I received what I called infant baptism. So we switched from the cradle, birth, to how do you get baptized? Baptismal font. At 17 year olds, I received infant baptism because I had no clue what in the world I was doing, where I was going. My dad told me, you're going over there and I'm gonna baptize you. Okay, you know, it's like going to the social club, making sure that, you know, you got the right stuff going. I had no clue of what God was doing to me on that day of my baptism. I was totally ignorant, didn't know a thing about anything. And we've been fighting about baptism forever. Back to the text. Mary and Joseph, or Joseph and Mary, brought their child for purification. I've had the opportunity only twice in my lifetime to present my child for purification, for baptism, for desperately presenting my child to be somehow protected by God. I only had two children. If I had seven, I would have done it seven times. But somehow, when I as a parent present my child to be purified, in some way or in some form, I'm handing my child over to God to be protected in some way. And each and every one of us struggle with that information and only by the power of the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, will you get a satisfying answer. 
I have been truly blessed in my journey with God. But it's not an easy journey. And so I switch. Not, well, yeah, wait a moment. I need, okay, I already told you. Why? Okay, I went from a Gentile and the words, the light of revelation. Somehow I needed a revelation. I needed God's light. I needed because I knew that I was a Gentile. I wasn't part of the club. But now I am. I am part of the club. But for glory for the people of Israel. And then to Mary. Boy, can you imagine receiving a divine word that your child is going to be killed and it will pierce your heart your soul so badly because there is nothing worth than having to deal with the death of your child there are 500 sermons in my soul to give to you but i must move on anna you know, Anna says the redemption of Jerusalem. And when we think about Jerusalem, gosh, they need to be redeemed. And so I wish I had more time, but I don't. I need to deal with that star. And now I'm not going to be nice. Because... That star, a cosmic star, points to the mess on planet Earth. It points to the horrible condition of Jerusalem in which baby Jesus was born under oppression. And I'm now going to the book of Matthew. I'm no longer in the book of Luke. So, you know, you've got to read it differently now we're going to go to the book of Matthew the book of Matthew is basically telling each and every one of his conditions are so bad around you you need God to help you rescue yourself magi get out of town Mary and Joseph get out of town we're about to experience the slaughter of innocents the lying King Herod one of us is about to do damage and kill all the youngsters. And a person like Rachel will be so deeply hurt because there is no consolation for massacres. And that connects us to the book of Jeremiah, and that connects us to all of scripture, and that connects us to our irresponsibility. I read a book that said, this Sunday school teacher was walking down the hall of a church and she's going to the kindergarten room and in the kindergarten room there's all this noise and whatever is going on but it's not supposed to be going on because it's too noisy the kids are having too good a time and all of a sudden this two or three year old comes running out and tells the person in the hallway we're being bad and we don't know how to stop Well, that pretty much sums up why we still need divine inspiration to help us stop our irresponsible behavior and our lack of self-discipline. And I could go on for another couple of days. I want to thank East Liberty Presbyterian Church for inviting me on this last day of the year 2023. For the whole month, I, have, I woke up with about 20 different brilliant sermons. You know, and I have no clue what you have received. But I think it's brilliant. 
so I just delivered the best thing that I could do at my age. And if you ask me, I hope you don't ask me next year. <laughs> you know, I'm, a, I'm now more of a teacher, not a preacher. You know, we are a blessed people, both you people on Zoom and us, because we look at Jesus, who is about to grow up, and so my picture is of, you know, not the old man in the cartoon, but the new young child in diapers or, or whatever, growing up. And so the conclusion has to be verse 40. Not Matthew's massacre, but both are part of the library contained in this book. This child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And as a reformed, ever reforming preacher, I must say that I hope and pray that we are good enough to help God grow our children so that they will be strong, filled with wisdom, and that the favor of God is upon them. May it be so in 2024 for you. Amen.